I really really have a major trust issue. Like I said in my previous upload, one of the reasons why I do have trust issues because of what happened to my family and all that. But yeah, I became so suspicious because you know you, you can just feel it, you know, when something is wrong. And so I started like checking on his phone because there was a time that he let me use his extra phone because I was having some issues with mine. Oh, I remember throwing my phone out because of one of our arguments or whatever. But and then he decided to let me borrow his phone. And then that's the time that I saw one of the sent messages, sent items in the phone that he actually forgot to erase or delete. And there was these messages about he was sending these messages to his one of his crushes in school. And that's the time I became suspicious. Although that was such that was like a harmless message. But for me, that became my triggering point, like something's really, really wrong. There was also this uh, exchange of messages between him and our common friend, one of the band members. Apparently, they, they were nice that they were going out without me, and then they were talking about meeting somebody and all that. And so that's the time I started really, really being suspicious about him. And then one time during work, I was trying to... This is actually like a no-no in that in that company, but I tried to check his number because you can see the you know the cause and everything. And so I you know checked on his number, and I saw that he there, there's this one particular mobile number that he kept on calling. And when I went home, when when I asked him, can I can I borrow your this number so I can call my mom or whatever, and he always tells me that he's not using that number anymore because. It doesn't have like um, minutes or he's not putting like load or minutes in that phone but when I check that account it has like 60 minutes of calls that you can use you know and so why is he lying to me I was like yeah this is so weird and so we had another tour in our band and again uh, our director allowed uh, asked me to join them although i'm not a student anymore but they needed like a horn player they needed a trumpet player and then so the director asked me to join them in this tour and so i agreed and then we went i went with a tour and then with my, with anthony of course he's also part of the concert tour concert band tour and that's the time that's the moment when everything unraveled because one of our common friends, one of our close friends, told me about uh, a situation when they were in a birthday party. I was not there because I was already working. There was this birthday party and then he noticed that Anthony became really, really flirty with him and became, you know, he was like hugging him, being touchy-feely. And he was such a flirt at that time. And then this friend, I'm gonna call him Rio. Rio? told me, could you feel I was supposed to tell you this because this happened months ago, but I didn't know how to tell you and I didn't know how to approach you, but he just decided to tell me. And then, yeah, he told me about it. That was actually like not a big deal at first when he told me about it because yeah, okay, you flirt with others, but I, I but at least you didn't have sex with him, you know? But when Rio told me about Anthony having somebody else aside from me that became the triggering point that was the last straw for me because Rhea told me that Anthony has been texting this guy I don't know I, I forgot already where is it, where this guy is from but he's been texting this guy they've been having communication they call each other babe or whatever so basically he was starting this relationship with this guy while we're dating while we're you know you get the point. And so I confronted him about it during our tour. That was really, really like... And we were in a place where we're supposed to be sleeping at 10 p.m. Because we were in a very conservative place. And we're not supposed to be like shouting or because... I think we were in the church. I don't know. But I just couldn't take it. Because they were drinking and he was drunk. Anthony was drunk. And I just decided to like confront him. Hey, blah, 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 blah. we were fighting. And we were outside the room fighting along the hallway and I can still remember um, the rest of the members, the band members were just like peeping in the window and watching us fight. And the fight just stopped because of our director and I was really, really, I, I apologized right after. 
he was like in his 60s and he just he was just like a referee <laughs> like stop both of you and then our director told me phil just give in because anthony's drunk you can talk about this tomorrow let's just stop because it's 11 p.m and it's not good it's not giving us a good image we are from Silliman. we should not be acting this way something like that and then i you know i came to my senses and just stopped but ever since that day i didn't really talk to him after that fight i was just really really mad i didn't want to hear his explanation i didn't want to hear anything from him i didn't want to talk to him and so during the rest of the tour we finished the tour without talking to each other we came home without talking to each other and it was December 2010, no, this th December 2009, and it was really timely because after the tour, we, we all of us went our separate ways because all of us, um, all the people are going to each of their hometowns and, you know, so after the tour, we didn't really communicate because he went home in his hometown and I went home. Just basically stopped the relationship there and we really didn't have that closure. We really did not break up officially, but for me, we were already broken up because of what happened that was my actually that was one of my mistakes that i should have like talked to him and listened to him but i was just really really mad and so yeah after that i was really really hurt again the trust issues just went to another 100 percent. so it my trust issues became 200 percent. yes so during that time when anthony and i broke up I think that was the moment where I I really, really, like, I indulged too much in my trust issues. If I say trust issues one more time. Yeah, it was really, really hard for me to really trust somebody. So it took me, like, a long time to really start another serious relationship. And so during that duration, like, from 2009 to 2010, like, for a year or so, I joined this clan. We had this group here in our place, uh, a group of bisexuals, a, gr a group of gay men just coming together and, you know, drinking and planning some, you know, community service stuff or what community service. No, planning on, you know, helping the city and all, all of that. But basically, we just we just come together and drink and have some and have fun. And I was not working at that time. So, yeah, I experimented, quote unquote, experimented on um relationships and meeting other people but i wasn't really in a i wasn't ready to excuse me to begin another serious relationship because of what happened with anthony like i said trust issues and so um we go we drink and then we will do video k karaoke and you know eat and whatever and so until when i started working here like i mentioned in my past upload upload i'm all, i'm working now in another bpo company for 11 years but when i started working there during my first year i think i met this guy and we are gonna call him sean so i met sean 2011 i think yeah i think we met in a bar and then we became close we exchanged numbers you know you know the drill we started dating i think it's just like three or four or five months because again I found out that they cheated on me oh. he, he was with this close friend his best friend they had this trip vacation trip or whatever and I was working so I wasn't available and I'm not I'm not really close to that best friend of his and so I didn't go with them but when he came back I learned from another common friend of ours that you know something happened with them i don't know the exact details but um basically he cheated on me and then so i stopped and i couldn't really trust him again trust issues take a drink if i say trust issues one more time so i broke up with him again because he cheated on me again it was the second time that i was being cheated on and so i just became i was fed up and i was like you know telling myself i can remember praying like god is this like a punishment because i stopped serving you i stopped going to church is this some kind of a like form of punishment from you because i do deserve some love i do deserve to be happy and i am yelling at you right now <laughs> and i had just so many questions and i became like depressed and just asking god why 
um, why am I still experiencing betrayal? Why couldn't just you give me a break? You know, like at an early age, I witnessed betrayal and 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 you know pain when witnessing those relate that relationship between my mother and father, and now I am experiencing it, experiencing it myself. Why? Until when will you be punishing me? You need to stop. I was praying that kind of prayer. You know, just yelling and, you know, um, complaining to God. Like, wow. I really felt like it was like some kind of a punishment from him. And so from that point on, I became single for six years. I guess that's part of the reason why my title of this video is it sucks to be single dot 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 question mark because i came to a point where i really really had this mindset that it does suck to be single because you meet this person and you decide to trust this person and all of a sudden he betrays you and then you meet another person and then you learn that just when you decided to start a relationship with him you learn that he's not single, he's actually married. Like married. That's just one of the many, many dating attempts that I had. If he's not married, he's a cheater. If he's not a cheater, he has a boyfriend. And if he, he doesn't have a boyfriend, he's like, um, he's not serious or whatever. And so I came to a point where like, okay, being single sucks. And this is kind of a punishment and it was really really annoying and frustrating and you know that that's the reason why I became focused on working my off like you know just partying work hard play hard all that stuff that's why I also mentioned in my previous upload that I spent most of my income just yeah I basically wasted my money with parties and drinking until I met this person it's the year 2017 and his name is Baba. <laughs> Again, you guys, for the sake of anonymity, I am not going to mention his name because most of my friends right now know this person. He was actually my roommate. Okay, I realize this video is too long. It's 43 minutes already. I think I would have, again, this would be like a two-part story. I'm sorry, you guys, this video is just too long. And so we will stop there, okay? I met this person named Baba, <laughs> year 2017. And if you're one of my close friends, you know who this person is. And <laughs> okay, we will end this person, uh, this story. <laughs> You will not have that person. <laughs>